All right, so here we are. It is day one of the VCV Rack 2 plugin. It's uh, early days yet, um, so it, it might crash while I show you what I'm about to show you. But um, I've been excited about today for a while because several years ago, Jeremy Wentworth of JW Modules, that I'm about to pull up right here, uh, made us a clock and the clock is called striker and what striker does is it gives you a turntable style pitch fader and a modular context and because it's it's you know modular you can set all of the important things about it uh, namely how far the pitch fader will go in percent so like seven percent or like kind of an extreme range at 50 percent and you can also set the initial value of the bpm so I can set this back down to like a little bit more reasonable, like six, and we could say we're gonna play at 140. Hundreds wants to be one, four, zero, maybe like 145. So now my zero point is at 145. Um, it does not have any sort of reset, so that's that's kind of one of the fun things about this clock, I think, is you just have to kind of drag the fader where you want to go if you're using it by itself. However, that's not the only thing that you can do. And actually to use it with live, that's not what we're going to want to do. So I am going to add this Ensithy scale and hope it works because it just seemed to kind of crash live. Great, one, that makes a lot more sense. Then I'm going to also go in here, grab this Audible box of knobs right here. So I've got this box of knobs, which is set to go from zero to one. And I'm gonna plug my box of knobs into my N and I wanna scale it up by two. Be kind of precise here. There we go. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna send out a number. And we can see it's coming in and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna come right here with it. And now you can see at the top of my fader I go from zero to one. All right, so how does this control Ableton? It's not controlling Ableton yet. I'm moving the knob and this is, this is still the same number. There's one more step that we got to do. And uh, I guess there's two really. First thing we have to do is we have to make this knob visible to live. And this right here is super exciting. So I'm not sure what this reserved is for. It appeared when I clicked off of this value. Um, I haven't seen it move in the couple of minutes I've been playing with this, so I think that's something that might not be so visible to us, uh, but I think I'm gonna, if these keep on popping up, just like shove them to the end of my control row and not really worry about it. Uh, but now that that sidebar is over, um, let's get to the plugins <laughs> folder for Rack, which for me is inside of my, let's make this a little bigger so we can see the path. It's inside of my computer and documents and then rack two and plugins. If you have JW modules installed, let's name it sort of by name. I'm gonna go right here and we're gonna go into resources. And in resources, we've got a little Max for Live device called the Striker Bridge. So what the Striker Bridge does is it, oh, insert MIDI effects before instruments, no problem. So, all right, click the big button to start the clock. Click a number below to set the incoming port. Right click striker module and VCV rack to configure and enable OSC output. So that right there tells you pretty much how this works. We right click over here, we go OSC on, and it's on port 7013. So if I click on this and then click on this, and then move this clock, let's see what's happening. Is it working? Now let's see, let's send it on a different port because it definitely works. Nope, all right, so let's try putting this on a different object, like maybe in the frame it hasn't calculated yet or something. Click the big button to start the clock, great. Port 8013, great, MIDI. Oh no, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so it's because OSC on is not hit. If we hit OSC on and then move the clock and then come back over here and turn on OSC, select the right clock, turn on OSC, now it's working. 
All right, so just to walk through that again, I thought this defaulted to on, but it wasn't on. We have to turn OSC on and then select port 8013. And now I've got this knob that's controlling Ableton's tempo. But what's really great is I've also got this knob that's controlling Ableton's tempo. And uh, this knob is visible to like a push two or a MIDI controller, right? So now we can just come and we can you know, use these, uh, maybe another one of these knob boxes just to keep it clean. And we could set uh, to 100s. I think we have to do the same scale trick. Um, not sure if that's related to my knob box or, or not, but uh, I'm not gonna bore you with setting that all up. But like, basically, long story short, um, there's there's nothing stopping you from like, clocking in really fun ways from here on out. You know what, as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna maybe duplicate twice. Drag this over, drag this over, and then we'll come out to this side. We'll come out to this side. And I don't think I'm gonna wanna go faster than one in 100s just to keep it reasonable. So I'll set this to tens and this to ones and i'll set these to be ramps and now i'll be able to like set in a nice two three four with like four three two one and i could re double click that to reset it so now i can see what i'm setting as far as tempo and i could fade it nice fun all right that's it um that's all I, that's all i really wanted to show you i wanted to keep it uh punchy um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you, you know how to get in touch with me, but, uh, in, in general, I hope this is really fun. Uh, I've always loved Ableton. I've always loved playing music with like other people, especially drummers. And the biggest bummer has always been like, man, my tempo is so rigid, but now your tempo can be just kind of immediately responsive to what you're hearing or seeing go on around you. Um, so uh, yeah, again, that's just right click, OSC on, click the big button, select your port, click the big button, and it works. So yep, yeah. thanks for watching, bye.